Hey everybody, this is Larry. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know how you're doing this problem. I'm gonna solve it live right about now. Cool. 743 network delay time. This N network nodes labeled one to N. Given times, a list of travel time as directed edges, uh, U, V, W, where U is the source node, V is the target node, and W is the time for a signal to travel from source to the target. Now we send a signal from target or certain node K. How long will it take for all nodes to receive the signal? If it is impossible, return negative one. So the first thing that I would do is, um, okay, it is directed, that is important. So n is uh, 100, so that's also important. Uh, because then that we can get away with doing lazier stuff. Uh, in this case, I might. Um, I think the canonical way to do it uh, the way that I would recommend you to solve it is by using um, what is it called? Uh, shortest path, like well, I mean, obviously a shortest path algorithm, but just use Dijkstra uh, because all the length of time will be positive, so Dijkstra will be fast enough, and you can do this in um, relog uh, re relog y time, I think. Um, the amount of edges. Um, um, and that'll be fast enough because it's a hundred times the number of edges, uh, log of the number of edges, which seems like the, they don't actually tell you the length. Oh no, oh the length of the times will be six thousand. So it's not even going to be a, a full graph because uh, n choose two is going to be whatever. So we log e is going to be way fast enough. But for now. But for me, uh, hopefully that's enough for you to work on it your own way. Uh, for me, I'm going to do it a different way, which is why I'm uh, talking so much, is that I'm going to practice a little bit on Ford Warshaw, just because I haven't done it in a while. Uh, so stick with me. And the reason why I can do that is because n is less than 100, or 100. So n cube is going to be fast enough. And it is implementation-wise very easy to write. And on the competitive programming, uh, I'm going to, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so now let's just create an agency matrix with all that set. Um, of, let's just say infinity. Uh, let's set, what's the, oh, the edge weights could be at most 100. So that means at first you're going to go for 100 stops, which means it's like 10,000. So let's set our infinity to to uh, let's see, you go to I don't know something bigger than ten thousand. That's good enough. Let's make it one to the thirty. That's fine. Uh, infinity times n for n raised n. So this is just creating a n by n adjacency matrix. Um, and we, uh, yeah. And then now we go for times for u v w in times. Uh, is it? I'm just checking to see if it's one. One index or zero index. It seems like it's one index, so that's at least. For, I, I like to keep things in zero index. Uh, you might. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, and then now, uh, and then now, adjacency matrix of u to v is equal to infinity. Uh, oh, sorry. Whoops. Is equal to w. Um, and then now we can just use void for sure as well, which is for k in range of n for. Uh, I in range of n for J in range of n. Uh, HSAC matrix of I J is equal to min of well the current I J or I going to K plus K going to J, right? And then now we have to think. Um, if it's impossible, we turn negative one, okay. And how long it would take for all the nodes to receive the signal? So, okay. So now, uh, well, we want to also set. So there's a couple of ways you can. So you can also use Ford Warshaw to actually uh, calculate cycles. Um, for now, because we don't have to. Work, well, there's no negative edges, and the and the cycles don't matter. So we could actually just do. Uh, for u in range of n, 
um, a transparency matrix of u to u is equal to zero. And what this does is it's saying that for the time it takes for, from a node to get to itself is zero because we start there. Okay, and then now uh, we just have to you know get the longest time. So let's set longest equal to zero, and then for for v in range of n, uh, longest is equal to the max of the adjacent, uh, well, not just the longest, or the adjacency matrix from k, of capital K to v. And then now we just have to check that if longest is greater than or equal to infinity, then we turn negative one because that means it's impossible, otherwise we turn longest. And it is running. Oh, it's the wrong answer. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. Oh, k is k minus one because zero indexed. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, yeah, in theory, I wouldn't put in more test cases, but am I okay? Yeah, let's. Yeah, I'm okay. Let, let's submit. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a little slow because, as we said, this is n cube instead of uh, v log e, uh, or v, so we have v cube instead of v log e. The, usually, the constants are better, uh, are really good, but because we have an extra v factor, it's going to be really slow, uh, and also it takes a lot of space. But I think I, I just wanted to be lazy, to be honest. Um, and for competitive programming, when you get these bounds. You want to do the things that you can write the fastest, and that's what I did here with Floyd Walsh Show, and I just wanted to get some practice on this problem. But definitely, if you're solving this at home, I would recommend Dijkstra's algorithm, uh, and, and yeah, and that's pretty much it um, for this problem. Uh, so these kind of, and also for an interview, definitely do Dijkstra's or at least talk about other uh, algorithms. Uh, I think if there's negative edges, which for it, for, with respect to uh, delay time, it doesn't make sense, and I would maybe consider using, or I would have to consider using Bauman Ford or something like that. Um, but yeah, but in general, this is a standard problem, standard, uh, standard graph problem, standard shortest path problem. So definitely practice this. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Uh, let me know what you think, and I will see y'all later. Bye bye.